Hey folks, Todd Colburn here with your Aerospace Structure Series. This video is going to show an example of how to calculate the strains on any lamina from the midplane strains. So the strains on any lamina from the midplane strains. Stay tuned. So this was what we laid out in our lecture and in the text. You can get a copy of the text. There's a link on this video and you're already, uh, you should have already watched the lecture eight before this video. This was the equation that when we have a lamina has multiple layers, the midplane strains. So if we take a look at that, what we have is we have extensional strains. So a typical laminate looks like this. We have, this is a four ply laminate. And remember they're numbered from top to bottom. The coordinate system for Z, since it's positive one, positive two, three right hand rule is gonna be acting down, but from the mid plane, it's measured from the mid plane of the laminate. That's our nomenclature. And our strains, we have them in the X direction. We have strains in curvatures. We have strains in the X direction. That's this extension. If we pull on it this way in the Y direction and the shear strain, which does this with the laminate. Okay. We also have curvatures. Remember curvature is the one over radius of curvature. So the radius of curvature and the curvature is one over that value. We have curvatures about the X. We have curvatures about the Y and then we have torque curvatures. So what happens is our X strains, if we pull on this, all lamina are going to strain the same amount. All lamina are going to pull a strain the same amount, amount as the centroid. And all lamina are going to have the same shear strain. Then we have, based on our position, if we have a curvature about the X, what that means is any lamina that is above, so this midplane has a certain curvature, and that means the extensional strain for anything above the neutral axis, anything up here, will be compressive. So, you know, we're putting in the Z position from the midplane. So if the Z is zero right at the midplane, we're just going to get back the extensional strains, no curvature strains. But if we're up here, that means our Z is negative since we're going in the negative positive direction. And that means a positive X curvature will cause extensional compression. And down if we're below the Z, the midplane, then a positive curvature will cause an extension in the same way about the Y axis. And then for the shear, um, the, tor the torsional <coughs> curvature means it's trying to do this, which means if we're up above the midplane, we're going to get a negative shear. And if we're below, we're going to get a positive shear due to that torque. And the same thing about the other axes. So that's the way it works uh, in our lamina. So let's go ahead and look at an example of how this works. Stay tuned. So let's say we have a boron epoxy. It's got five plies. 90 plus 45, zero minus 45 as we see here. Okay, you got that? Thicknesses of all pieces are 050, and this, this uh, laminate is subjected to midplane strains and curvatures. And we're gonna show what those strains and curvatures are in body coordinates. So the body coordinate midplane strains are given by this, and curvatures by this, okay? Now what that means is we have our laminate. Remember this one has four plies, but the actual one we're dealing with here has five. Same coordinate system, so from the midplane downward is positive. At the midplane in body coordinates, which means in some coordinate system that doesn't necessarily align with any of the principal coordinate systems of the la uh, lamina of each layer, we have minus 400 micro inches per inch in the X plus 300 extension, micro inches per inch in the Y, and a shear strain of minus, uh, minus 100 micro inches per inch. 
Also at the same time, at the midplane of the laminate, we have curvatures of minus 800, which means going this way, plus 20 in the Y, and plus 90 for the Z. Okay, you got that? I mean for the XY, for the torsional or shear curvatures. Okay, so that's what we have at the midplane. So what we want to do first is sketch our element. So we're going to sketch each and every layer. There are five layers. We want to identify what number of the layers. We'll call that K, one, two, three, four, five, going from top to bottom. We, it's useful to show the angle of the coordinate. Now, notice that our midplane strains and curvatures are all given in body coordinates. This, this is common because normally we're going to have a laminate. Each layer has its own principal directions, but the loads are going to come in. Often they'll be aligned with the one direction of the primary layer, but not necessarily. So we're generally going to be getting loads, which means, and strains, corresponding strains and body coordinates that don't necessarily align. Remember, all the angles, all the orientations of all the plies are relative to that body coordinate system. So we have midplane strains and curvatures in body coordinates. The first step is always to now calculate the strains at the midplane at each of each and every layer or lamina in body coordinates. So all we're going to do is use the relative position, the Z position, the Z bar position of each lamina, this midplane, to determine what the strains in each layer are in body coordinates. We don't need to do any transformations. We're going to do that later once we have body coordinate strains in each and every layer. So we've now drawn our laminate. We, uh, we're not quite done. So notice we have the uh, layer number. We have the orientation. We show the overall thickness of the laminate. And we show our positive Z going from the midplane of the laminate downward. It's also useful, useful to show our Z positions, the Z position, from Z0 at the top of the first layer, Z1 at the bottom of the first layer, and so on, to show those on these. Those are not shown. And to show the Z bars, which is the midplane uh, position of each and every lamina. So for Z bar 1, that's at minus 0.1 here, because for this particular lamina, each of these is 0.05, and... Uh, excuse me, this is a 5-ply, not a 4-ply. So actually the midplane would be in the middle of the third layer. So we're going up uh, two full layers, which is 0.1, negative 0.1. And then if we're looking for the layer 4z bar, then from that midplane value, which is right here, we'd be going down exactly one layer. Half of that and half of the next would be the midplane of the 4. And then there's one beneath, as you can see in the picture. So we would show the Z position of each and every spot from Z0 to Z5 and the Z bar position from Z0 to Z5. And we're seeing the Z bar positions for layer 1 and for layer 4 in this particular case. Okay. Now let's say we actually want to get the midplane strains in layer 1. Remember what our equation is. Our equation that we looked at a, a little bit ago is this. We have the midplane strains, extensional strains at the midplane of the laminate, and we have the midplane curvatures, and we have the Z bar position of the particular layer we're looking at. Now we could actually put any Z position at all in this equation, and we'll get what those body coordinate strains are. But the only place we really understand the properties, or where we understand the properties the best, is at the midplane of each and every layer. That's where we have the orientation about. That's where we have the properties developed for as if that whole layer is at the same exact number. So typically, even though we could put in any Z position, we're generally going to put in the Z bar position of each and every layer. The exceptions to that rule will be sometimes like, let's say we're doing testing, we put a strain gauge on top or on the bottom, then we would could put in the Z position of the top and lower surface, and what that would do is allow us to calculate what the strain would be expected is in that strain gauge.
But for most analysis, uh, when we're just analyzing, we'll be going from those midplane strains and curvatures and body coordinates to the lamina midplane strains. And remember, at the lamina level, while the laminut had extensional and shear strains at, at the midplane and also curvatures, the, each lamina will only have extensional values. Extensional in the X and Y and torsional, or excuse me, shear. That shear is caused by that torsional component, okay? So that's how that works. So first we show, we write our equation, and then we plug in our midplane extensional strains and our midplane curvatures, and then calculate that, and we find out for layer one, these are the values, micro inches per inch. So layer one, the extensional strain is minus uh, 0.32. So it's a little, uh, we had a, notice we had a, a negative curvature, which means it was like this. So we get a little bit of extension adding to the original compressionary strain. We end up with minus 320 in the, in the resultant. In the y direction, we end up with plus 298 micro inches per inch. And for the shear strain in the first layer, we see minus 109. Now, if we wanted to go on, we could put in the z position in that same equation, the c bar of layer two, and we would get the extensional, the strains in that layer for layer two. If we plug in the z bar for layer three, layer four, layer five, we're going to get those uh, strains in the midplane of each and every layer, and then we can use a appropriate failure criteria to write our margins of safety. You got that? So that is how it's done. That is how we can evaluate the strains. Now, the next step, usually that's not enough because we don't have properties usually in body coordinates for these layers. Now that we have the, the layer by layer strains and body coordinates, we then will do a transformation with the T and the TI matrix in order to convert that to principal direction strains at each and every layer. And then we can compare to a suitable failure criteria. That was our little example for how to calculate the strains at each ply, the midplane of each ply, or actually at any position of our laminate based on our midplane strains. Hope that helped. Enjoy.